and not allow you to get what trouble brought. I am convinced, as I said in the class this morning, I don't believe anything that I see can last forever. I don't believe anything that I'm looking at can last forever. I believe that everything that I see today is just temporary. Everything that you see is just temporary. Your troubles did not come to last forever. They're temporary. I believe that sometimes it's hard to find meaning to life madness. But I don't believe that God is just leading us through the waters and fires of life without having a, a purpose. I don't believe that God is allowing anything to happen in our lives without purpose. Many times we face a lot of hardships in life. Everybody don't, but a lot of us do. Even in that, sometimes it seems unfair that you went through more than anybody else, or so it seems. But I realize today we need to remind ourselves it was a great trial. There must be a great blessing. Hello? I need to remind us today if you think it's unbearable, wait till it becomes bearable. The pendulum of God always swings both ways. You'll never be so far down that you'll never get back up higher than you were before. You need to understand why they came and what was in it for you. I remember reading in the Bible where that Israel had been in Egypt. You know how long they were there? 432 years. Slaves. They probably like I was when I grew up. See, when you're born into something, you just realize, you think that's what life is. Right? I was born in the, in the poor house. But I was happy. You know why I was being happy? That's all I knew. I thought everybody had jelly on their biscuits. I thought it, the rich people ate jelly and biscuits, but they was eating light bread. I found out when I went to school. I was one of the most embarrassing things in our lives. In mine, anyway, I don't know about there. You know, you had to take your lunch to school. You had to hang it up where your coats were and put it on top of the shelf there. Everybody in my school was taking light bread. I had biscuits. Now, y'all, some of y'all probably don't know this about biscuits. It is a whole lot of grease in that. And if you leave it in that sack, by lunchtime, a whole sack was grease. So children, and kids would come out to get the lunch, and they'd be hollering, who grease his sack is that? I I couldn't eat my lunch with everybody else because they had light bread and I had biscuits. Isn't that crazy? We had the best and didn't even know it. Isn't that something? People like that today. They can have the best and still don't even know. Sometimes we are embarrassed by what we have and don't know it's the best. It may not look like everybody's a sack, but it's the best. But I realized after a while that maybe we were living just a little bit lower than everybody else. 
But here was Israel. They were slaves for 432 years. They had, and I'm sure they had adjusted, adapted, learned, taught the kids, and they grew up how to pick up straws and sticks. Because what we are, we started passing it on. I don't want y'all to think too hard, but I see y'all thinking already. Our kids don't know any more than what we are telling them. So we pass it on. If you tell your child, I hope you get as far as I did in this life. No, I don't want my kids to stop where I stopped. I don't want my kids to ever stop where I stopped. I want them to go way farther than I ever been. But they won't know that until they get out of that. The children of Israel for 432 years lived as slaves. It was a trial. It was a test from God. But did you know all of those, I'm sure Uncle Willie had a lot of stories he could tell you about how his back hurt him and how he went to work every day and how all my corns is hurting and I've been sick. And he can tell you all them stories about slavery. But you see, one day God says, I'm going to pay you for being that slave. You got something coming. Hello? I said, you got something coming. See, they didn't know that. They were just working. But the Bible said the day that God told them to leave, the day before departure, he said, I want you to go to every Egyptian and get everything you can, borrow everything they got. Get as much as you can because your payday is getting ready to come. Egyptians was getting happy because they think we're going to make some money now. But God was getting ready to pay. You're not going to be a child of God and go through stuff all your life and God won't pay up. And when he left Egypt, when he made them pay, Egypt paid them for 432 years of free, free work. And you know what? They bankrupt Egypt. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes you feel you, when you get on the other side of trouble, that's when you really want to rejoice. But God is telling you, you ain't got to wait till you get on the other side of this thing here. You know what? You already know you got a reward coming. You already know you're going to get paid. You might, ain't no sense in crying. You ought to be rejoicing. Oh, hallelujah. We have to understand that we're living sometimes in these mundane existence. No real excitement whatsoever. And yet at the same time, we're not prepared for the riches of God. The things that bring riches to his house. I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about this house. The things that causes and gives God a desire to just live in this house. We have not prepared a place for him like he's prepared a place for us. And we don't know what it takes to make him just want to just live there and stay there. Oh, hallelujah. But I want a God that's pleased. And I know how to please God. Ain't but one way to please him. One way. Without faith. Y'all going to say it with me. Can you say it? What does that say? We need to jump on stuff. It's in. It'd be like me standing here right now, turning this down, 
into a brick of gold. You think I can do it? No, 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 I know you don't. No, but I said me. You think it's possible for me to do this right here? No. No, I know. That, I ain't going to try to mess with your faith. Because I ain't going to lie to you, I don't believe it either. Because <laughs> it did, I'd be walking around with a whole bunch of gold. Huh? Yeah, one of my dimes be gold. So I know that, but the Bible says it's in him. It is. So how in the world, how in the world are we going to have a house with God without, y'all getting, getting so saved up. Y'all got me in the ground here, sir. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I need to find some riches in my troubles. I need to find something that God is pleased with no matter what I'm going through. I got to get something in my house that mirrors him who's got me. Without faith, it is totally impossible to please God. Quit fooling yourself. God ain't pleased in what you're doing. He pleased in who you're becoming. Because the Bible said the just shall walk by So here we have these trials. And it doesn't even make sense. It really don't. God, why you got to test me on love? And why you got to try me on, see whether now I'm going to believe it or not? Just give it to me. We don't want to be tried to get it. Just give it to me. Don't try me. But see, God says, I want you to be tried so you can appreciate what the trial gave you. I got to try you so you can appreciate. And then when you start talking about walking by faith, you've been through a trial, sis, I'm telling you right now. Once you get through that, faith becomes more appreciative. All of a sudden you're saying, boy, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I trusted God. I'm so glad that I kept believing God in spite of everything that was happening. I'm so glad my faith seems much more precious now because I had some troubles. You know, I read, that's the reason I began to read this and begin to realize that a lot of time it's that we don't go for the gold. We go for the lead. We go for the getting out. We go for the other stuff that's not gold. We don't go for the gold because they tell me, I've never been an Olympic sprinter, never been in Olympics, nor would I even train for one because I'm never going to train no four years, run up mountains and all that stuff and get with a thousand people and lose. In a gold medal situation, ain't but one going to get it. They spend four years of, of punishing their bodies, doing all kind of stuff, and then you know what? And then finally, they get a chance to run for the goal. I wonder, what are we going for? Are we going for the goal? Hmm? Are we really going for the goal, or are we just selling in? Oh, Hallelujah. See, out of the spoils, in 1 Chronicles 26 and 27, out of the spoils won in the battle. What spoils have you won lately? What have you won in your latest skirmish with your so-called enemies? 
What can you say you have spoiled that you gain a reward from? When, is the, when was the last time you enjoyed the spoils of your trouble? No wonder the Lord says, count it all joy when you find yourself a fall into divers temptation. Fall, count it all joy because there is a reward in my trial. There is something on the other end of when it's finished. There's something that I never had before. And oftentimes, we are not looking beyond where we are. We don't know that God didn't just put you here to put you here. Every time we have any type of what we call unsettling part of your life, you need to realize one thing. God got me here because he's trying to get me something. I said he got me here because he's trying to get me something. And God says, look here. Here's David said, out of them spoils, everything I want from my enemy, everything I took from my enemy, everything I got from them, I dedicated it to my house. You see, I've heard people say the devil came to steal my peace. Well, let me tell you something. I come to spoil the devil that takes peace. He come to steal my joy. I come to spoil the devil that's trying to steal my joy. See, what we got to realize is that God wants you to step up to the plate and start taking back the spoils of your victory. Don't get here saying about victory without expressing and really enjoying what you got in the victory. Oh, hallelujah. See, I have a lot of things in life I would have never understood. I would have never grasped, but I begin to realize one thing. God sent me on a journey the other day to let me see one thing. Everything I've done in your life. And look what you've got from what I've done. I can remember having hardly no faith. Know what troubles have done? Woo, Lord, have mercy. You know what troubles do? It increases your faith. Then I realized why he said, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which will come to you. Don't think that's strange. Because the trying of your faith, oh hallelujah, going to give you some dedication stuff. The trying of your faith is more precious well, I said, more precious than what? I'm telling you, he said it's more precious than gold. He said, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is something. Don't get scared because it looks bad. But what you need to understand is that I try that so that your faith can look just like gold. I'm not going for any second place thing. I'm not going for a bronze medal. I'm running a race to get the real prize. I'm not trying to just see if I can maintain and get my name put in the hell of view because I was in the race. I'm running for the gold medal. I want to be at the top of the game. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible to please God. We don't need to fool ourselves anymore. We don't need to play the faith game. No. Either we're going to believe or we're not going to believe. But we're not going to be able to talk doubt and have faith. We're not going to be able to say one thing in our mouth and then go home and worry about it a different way. It's time to lay it all at the feet of Jesus. I heard him say, cast all your cares. Where? 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 Some of y'all still trying to carry them home with you. Some of y'all still want to carry them with you. Here God has said, I come. You've been in trouble long enough. Don't you want to get a reward for it? Huh? Don't you know what your troubles have been doing? So I remember one time I got arrested. I'm a trumped up mess. 
as a pastor. Woo! This is the book that was as bad. There ain't nothing as bad as knowing you're innocent. Know you're innocent. That dude had me down a little sawed off private eye, a little detective. I ain't gonna lie, Holy Ghost was not working well. I was feeling real upset. I'm up here with you now. When I was in that activity, I, I could say something, but I, I ain't know nothing. He slammed me against the wall. Yeah, took my mug, took my money. I shot my shot. I took that little picture, got my finger printed. He talked all bad and everything. I left out that I left out that room that day. Bishop, I was so mad. I, I, I couldn't even go home because I was scared I was gonna kill the dog. I rolled around. That's usually why that's how I do. Sometimes I just ride and get along. And me and God can talk better. And all of a sudden, the Lord began to impress on me. It's going to be okay. Don't you hate it when somebody tells you it's going to be all right, but they won't tell you how it's going to be all right? They didn't give you no answer. But he just said it's going to be all right. He never told me how. And here I am, I'm suffering. Because I'm going through some things. I'm thinking, Lord. Because they gave me a lie detector test. That's what it was. Never, as long as I live, I'll never take another one. Because that lie detector lied. I know it lied. God knows it lied. I said, God, look at this. Somebody said, I talked to a friend. He said, you better go get your lawyer. I've been sitting in church for quite a while. You know, I heard all, all them faithful saints. I heard them singing that song. He's my lawyer in a courtroom. You ain't going to believe this. See, so don't tell me stuff that you don't believe because I believe it. You know what I do? See, I already heard from my lawyer. So I got, I got him on retention. I done retained him for a long time. And, he, and somebody told me he's never lost a case. I got it. I retained him. And my lawyer told me everything is all right. Now I would have went and got one of them other guys. They'd be trying to talk some crazy stuff. I didn't know how it's going to be all right. I'll never forget. But I remember that was one of the most troubling times of my life. And in a troubling time, I'm going to tell you what, you may have a lot of friends, but you ain't got no friend like Jesus. You may think you got friends, but you ain't got no friend like Jesus. Now, they'll sit there and listen to you for a while, and then they'll go to yawn and on you, oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. And then won't answer the phone the next time you call. But you know what Jesus done? I got down that night. It was Friday coming. He ain't came through for me like I wanted him to. I'm now praying on Friday, on Thursday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday night, because court day is Friday, and God ain't done nothing that's spectacular. I'm looking for God to come, at least send lightning on the courthouse and split it. But you know what it does? It made me pray a little bit harder. I got out and prayed some more. You know what? God's tune never changes word, never changes. No way to say it again. It'll be all right. Man, I'm saying, I want one of them other kind of testimony. I don't, I, don't, I don't want the thing you got to go through. I want that testimony that didn't let me go through. 
I want that testimony to say, you know, the devil showed up. Yeah, but he didn't get me. I, in Jesus' name, I got him gone. I want that kind. I wanted the testimony where I could get up and say, boy, they trumped the charge up on me. Bless God. The police cried and repented and said, I'm sorry. And no, you ain't got to go to jail. No, I didn't get none of that. All I got was it's all right. I remember going to the courthouse that morning. When you believe, you got to look like you believe and, and act like you believe, right? I used didn't take baths on, on Fridays like that. Well, I cleaned up. I had my smelly, smelly on and everything. I had my towel. I went in there, in that courtroom, I'll never forget this. You had all them little, I won't call them thugs, they call them thugs, you know. They had the shoes on the towel, everything hanging there and everything. And they all over here, you know, looking like little young gangsters. I'm the only one in here, suit and tie. I remember the guy, I seen him look at the docket. He kept looking at it. I said, he's looking at my paper right now. And you know, and God is still speaking. He said, do you remember when I was numbered? Do you know Jesus went to jail for something he didn't do? How many times have I heard y'all say, I want to be what they say? Is that what they say? Until we go to jail. Until you get a chance to be like Jesus, you don't want to be like Jesus. Because here I was fighting that whole episode, and God spoke to me. I was numbering among the transgressors. You know what he done that day? I had already preached Thursday night. It was not even a Bible study. I almost got inside that preach. I told him, I said, you know what? I said, I, I'm going to make the devil madder than he ever been in this life because you know what? What we have learned, got to learn to do, when it gets hard, you got to get harder. When he, when he started doing his thing, do yours better. You know what? I had never prayed like I had prayed then. You know what that trouble get, got me into? It got me in a place of prayer I had never been before. It really got me in a place of prayer where I wanted to hear from God. It got me in a place where I knew when I heard from God, I knew it was all right. And I told the church that night, I said, I'll tell you what, when I come back to church on Monday, I will have a testimony because you see what the devil done try to drive me away from God only drove me deeply into God. What you got to understand, don't let no trouble make you leave God. Use that trouble to make it a golden faith. Use that trouble to get deep in God. Use that trouble and say, you know what? When I come through this, I'm going to be better than I was before I got in it. I want to use all my trials. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you here today, we're getting ready to close. I know, I feel you got to go. I feel your, your stomach growling. But we got to understand God is sending you through for a reason. Don't go through your trials moaning and complaining. Be thankful. Be thankful. You know why? Because on the other end of this thing, you begin to see why the troubles came. You'll see why they came. All of a sudden, you'll know that I know God now more than the new God before. See, I didn't know God could be so peaceful until my life became so chaotic. I didn't know that God could love me like he loved me until I thought I couldn't be loved. I didn't know that. I didn't know that God's grace would be sufficient until I had to know his grace was really sufficient. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes in the midst of our trials, one thing I like about God, you know what we do? I'm getting ready to close for real, straight up. I'm serious. Every now and then, God would introduce you to a trial because he wants to introduce you to a new song. 
Sometimes God will give you a song to go through. And sometimes the song is not sung to ever. But he is going to give you a song. You understand? Some of you, I ain't talking about, you may never sing it to anybody else, but you'll sing it to him. How many of you in here today, and like most of us, when it comes to life, we're kind of like in the dark on that day. We don't know when to give thanks and when not to give thanks. Could I help us today just for one second? Could I help you right now? First thing I want us to do is stand together. I, I'm not here to hear all your soft stories today. That's not what we're here for. Because I know what, what he can do with a soft story. I know what he can do to a burnout life that's been turned to ashes. I know what he can do to people who have been crying all their life. We have a God that knows how to wipe away every tear. I'm sorry someone told you your life is never going to be better and it's never going to get any better. I'm sorry you bought in that lie, but I'm here today to tell you the truth. You ain't even, you ain't even seen nothing yet. Yeah, my brothers, you just don't understand. It's been like this all my life. I don't know how many people that Jesus met at one time, they've been like that all their life. A woman with the issue of blood, not all her life, but most of her life. Man was born blind. He like that all his life. Guess what happened? Jesus showed up. Guess what happened then? I'm not here to pat you on the back of yesterday. I'm not here to talk about how bad yesterday was because the Bible tells you, forget it. It's time for y'all to have a memory. Eraser. Forgetting those things which are. Which way are you looking now? Where are you looking? Are we looking ahead? Looking forward? Are we looking forward? Let me tell you something. You're not going to change nothing from yesterday. All your troubles ain't going to change because you're crying today about it. But I can tell you what can change today is how you're going to react to life from here on in. You can leave this place with your hands lifted and say, thank you, Lord. I'm so glad for every trouble I had because I realize now all those trials and those troubles have gave me a greater faith and a great desire to be in you. If we could only today Just for one minute. You know, it, you know the, the, the man had a son. And Jesus asked that man, because his son had demons, say, you, you believe I can do this? See, I, I realize a lot of things we preach in church and a lot of things is way above our head sometimes. And a lot of times, we, we, you know, when you're in a setting of church, you're supposed to believe, so it's kind of hard not to say you don't believe. It's kind of hard. But for one time in our life here today before we leave, unless you're just brimming over, percolating over with faith, would you pray this one? Lord, heal me. Heal my unbelief. I'm going to say it with me. Lord, heal. Say it one more time. Lord, heal my unbelief. Oh, God. It's like he said. See, there's a part of us that's a little bit, we want to believe. That man wanted to believe. But he also had seen that situation so long that he doubted. See, when you look at something bad for so long, it messes with your faith. You know what I'm saying? When you see a situation so long that ain't changed and don't seem to change, and you believe God can do it, but 
there's another part of you that said, I don't know, he's been hurt like that so long, he's been so messed up so long. I know God can do it. You know our favorite word, God is able. But Jesus wanted to do it. You know what the man said? I believe, Lord, I do believe, but would you please do one thing for me? Yeah, he... <laughs> Heal that. Heal my unbelief. Heal my unbelief. Heal my unbelief. Friend, do you know how hard it is to be sick and have to have faith to be sick? Or have faith while you are sick? Do you, do you, do you realize? Oh. When you have to wake up every day with the same symptoms, And you want to believe that God can hear you. you. You do believe that God can hear you, but that's another part. And that other part says, you know, I've been like this for so long, I don't know. Uh, if you want to, Lord, you can, but I'm really not going to press the issue. Come on, it's time for us right now. God heal my unbelief. Because I don't want to just have halfway faith. I'm trying for that golden faith. I'm trying for the faith that's more precious than gold. Heal my unbelief. Say it with me. Heal my unbelief. Come on, if you keep saying it, you're going you're gonna to get something happen to you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you because it's in us. We know that. We know that. We know. I want to believe. I want to believe. But there's always that other part I got to deal with. Precious God, I thank you right now. As healing virtue flows to us, God let it flow also through us. Lord, I'm praying for every soul that came here today with unanswered prayers, troubles that don't cease. Heal their unbelief too. I'm praying today in the name of Jesus for clarity in our faith. I'm praying today that God, as you baptize our minds, with faith. In God was with faith. Now, Lord, I'm praying that every soul that heard your word, heard the word, would now cast all those cares upon you. For the Bible says you care for our soul. Heal my unbelief. Heal my doubt. Because it's through these things that sickness and everything has happened in my life. God, I thank you. Come on, somebody give him some thanks right now. Thank him. Come on, somebody thank him right now. Just thank him right now. Thank you. Come on, give him. Thank him. Thank him. Come on, you, you need to thank him. You'll get rid of all that doubt by giving him thanks, see, because you don't have time to think about what is not. Now you think about who he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, dear God. I praise you right now. I praise you right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. I said, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Don't turn it a loose. Turn it a loose. Come on, turn it a loose. Turn it a loose. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for the faith. Thank you for the trial. Thank you, Lord God, for the trying. Thank you, Lord God, 
that you sought fit to let me be involved in a trial. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. I thank you that you have, you have accounted me worthy. You have counted me worthy, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, dear God, today. I praise the name of Jesus today. Oh, without you, God, we can do absolutely nothing. Without you, Jesus, we are nothing. Without you, Lord, we amount to nothing. Oh, God, I give you thanks and praise today. I worship you, Lord. I magnify the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you today. God bless you today if you need to pray. If you, if you still need to pray, you need to keep praying. Don't leave here with any doubt. Don't leave without. You need to leave doubt at the altar. You need to get out of this place today and start a walking in faith. Because the more you walk in the faith, you're going to be pleasing God. And when, you, when your ways pleases God, you know what he said? When your way pleases him. He said he make even your enemies become your friend. Come on, let's walk in faith today. Let's walk in faith. In Jesus' name, God bless you.